Hello, I'm Jason with scienceandmath.com. And today what we're going to do is build a very simple lava lamp. And the reason I'm putting lava lamp in quotations is because it's not a real lava lamp, but it's a really fun experiment that looks sort of like a lava lamp and it's very, very simple to do. Uh, what we need for this experiment is we need some sort of vegetable oil that you can find uh, in your pantry. Uh, we need some sort of glass. Here I sort of use like a, a milk bottle, but really any glass from the kitchen is going to work great. Uh, you want some water. I have a bottle of water here. You just use tap water if you like. Uh, some salt. doesn't matter if it's sea salt, just regular old salt. And some red food coloring because most of the time we look at these lava lamps and they red, right? Now a real lava lamp works because you plug the lava lamp in the wall and heat goes into, into the container, into the liquid, and it starts to carry the stuff up and then it cools off and then it comes down and it gets hot again and it goes up and down and up and down. That's called convection. So the way the, a real lava lamp circulates is basically because heat is going into it. It's causing it to go up and down in a circle like that. Now we're not doing anything like that here. We're sort of making a pretend lava lamp that's much safer to do and it, but it kind of looks the same. And there is some science behind what's going on here that's really neat. So what we're going to do is get some of the stuff out of the way and kind of get ready to set this up. So what you need to do is just sort of grab your, uh, your uh, bottle there and we want to go ahead and put some water in the bottle. So let's go ahead and just sort of fill up with water. How much water do you need? It's really up to you, but I like to put at least four or five inches of water in there if I can get, if I can do that. So I'll go ahead and do something like this. And also a tall glass probably is going to work a little bit better for this guy. So there's, that's fine, that's a little bit. You want to leave some space at the top because we're going to need to put oil. Now before we put any oil in there, the next thing you want to do is put your food coloring in. So here is our food coloring. Usually just a couple drops. I'll try one drop. Let's see what that looks like. In fact, that's just kind of neat to look at by itself, just the way the food coloring sort of starts to spread out. We can give it a little swirl, All right, just to kind of see. Yeah, that's not quite red enough. I like mine a little bit redder, like real lava, right? So we can go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and put a couple more drops. So I think overall this is four drops of red food coloring in there. All right, you really don't want to make this too dark because it's kind of hard to see what's happening, but nice red color is good. I'm going to put the top on here and just kind of give it a little bit of a swirl. Like that. So that's a pretty good color for a lava lamp, I think. All right, so what we're going to do now is put our oil on top. So let's go ahead and take our oil. How much oil do you need? You really don't need that much oil, maybe a centimeter or, or two on top. Let's just go ahead and pour the oil right on top, something like that. Nice little layer. So what we have here by itself is already kind of neat. We have a, a bottle of water that's tinted red and we have some oil on top. Now, of course, oil is less dense than water, which just means that for the same amount of the stuff, it weighs less. So because of that, it floats to the top. So we have oil on top, water on the bottom. They're not going to mix too well. Now, what we need to do next is take our salt and you want to open the salt up uh, so that you can pour big clumps in there. It works OK if you just sprinkle salt in the salt shaker. Uh, and you can play with this yourself, but it works, I think, a little e better even if you kind of pour some good clumps of, of salt in there. So what we're going to do is go ahead and put the salt in and just kind of watch what happens as the salt sinks to the bottom. It's going to sort of look like a lava lamp, and then we'll talk about what happens. So let's go ahead and sprinkle some nice clumps of salt in there. Okay, now let's watch we sort of have some sort of lava lamp action going on here. We have nice bubbling up coming from the bottom. Now at first you may not know what's causing this, but if you get down here you can sort of see that the oil is kind of trapped down here in the salt. And if you look at it long enough, you'll see the guys floating up to the top. And when the bubbling sort of stops, you can even just add a little bit more and the process can continue. So let's go ahead and add a little bit more, kind of goose it really good. And let's take a look at it one more time. Now, even after the, the salt is already in the bottom, you can see the oil is kind of just bubbling up ever so slightly from the bottom of there and just kind of floating its way back up to the top. So the question here is, what is causing this? Why is this happening? I mean, you kind of sit there, everything's done, and you can kind of see these bubbles of oil looking sort of like a lava lamp coming up to the top. What's actually causing this to happen? Well, uh, what's happening here is we have the water on the bottom, which is tinted red, and we have the oil on top, 
which is floating on top. We've talked about that. Now, when you pour a clump of salt on top of this oil, uh, salt is heavier. If you notice, salt is heavier than that oil, or it's more dense than that oil, so it sinks. So it basically goes directly through the oil and into the water, and when it gets into the water, it sinks to the bottom of the water as well. But what happens is, when you pour the salt on top of this oil, it kind of grabs the oil because it's sitting on top of it, and it pushes the oil down through into the water. And it carries the oil all the way down to the bottom uh, of the container, and then once the oil is trapped at the bottom, it just kind of sits there. Now what happens is when the salt gets in the water, it starts to dissolve. So what's happening here is the salt is starting to dissolve in the top layer down here in the very bottom. And once a little bit of it dissolves, it frees up that little bubble of oil that it carried down there. And then that bubble of oil can kind of come back up to the surface. So it's not a real lava lamp. It's not really working with heat. But it kind of it, it kind of looks like one because it's causing the oil to kind of float from the bottom of the of the glass up to the top. So again, what's happening is you put salt on there, it kind of traps the oil, pushes it down into the water, and it's, so you have a trapped bubble of oil at the bottom of the glass. And then as soon as the salt dissolves a little bit, it releases those bubbles, which are then able to come back up to the surface. And so you could just keep doing it as long as you like. If you'd like to try uh, a little sprinkle, you can try that too. And sometimes that'll work. You see it's sort of it's sort of trying to push it down there and it does work a little bit, but you get better results if usually if you kind of goose it and just let it do its thing. So it's dragging that oil down to the bottom and then it's starting to release those bubbles as the salt starts to dissolve. So there's a couple lessons going on here. Salt dissolving in water is one of them. Uh, salt being more dense than oil is another one because it's allowing the oil to be trapped and brought down to the bottom. And then once that salt is dissolved at the bottom, that oil wanting to float back to the surface is, is basically caused because it's less dense than the water, which means it weighs less for the same amount of the stuff there. That's what density is. So I'm Jason with scienceandmath.com. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, little experiment. Very, very simple to do. Go grab yourself some water, some food coloring, some oil. And although it's not a real lava lamp, there's some real science behind why it's doing what it's doing that you can learn from. And so I hope you do that. Go do it yourself. Grab an adult. Let them help you with it. And learn about mixing and dissolving. Learn about density and floating. And you can make yourself a nice little uh, lava lamp at home.